Hello, and welcome to Battery Hacker. Do you want to reduce power loss and make your solar setup safer? Let's go step by step to understand how to pick the right wire size for your solar panels. In this video, we'll cover the key formulas that help you find the correct wire thickness, whether you're wiring one solar panel or a more complex hybrid setup. Before we move into calculations, Let's quickly refresh some basics of solar panel wiring. When you connect solar panels in series, the voltage of each panel adds up, while the current stays the same as one single panel. This type of connection is best when you want to raise the system voltage. Just make sure it doesn't exceed the maximum input voltage limit of your charge controller. On the other hand, when you connect panels in parallel, the current from each panel adds up, but the voltage stays the same as one panel. Parallel wiring is often used if your system faces shading issues, or if you are using a PWM charge controller that needs the panel voltage to match the battery voltage. Now, let's talk about how to size the wire correctly. There are two key factors you always need to consider, current and wire length. Both directly affect the voltage drop in your system. Let's take an example. Assume you have one 100-watt solar panel and the distance from the panel to the charge controller is about 30 feet, or 9 meters. Step 1. Calculate the maximum current. Look at the panel's short-circuit current, also called ISC. For this panel, it's 5.21 amps. To make it safe for outdoor conditions, we apply a 1.56 safety factor, which is a result of multiplying 125% by another 125%. So the maximum current, or IMAX, will be 5.2, 1 amps multiply by 1.56 equals 8.13 amps. This means the highest possible current that might flow through your wire is 8.13 amps. Next, we use a voltage drop calculator. The wire length is 30 feet, and we'll start by checking with a 10-gauge wire. Use DC voltage mode, enter the panel's operating voltage, and the calculated current of 8.13 amps. When we calculate, the voltage drop comes out to 2.38%, which is below the 3% limit, so a 10-gauge wire is suitable here. If your voltage drop is above 3%, then you either need to use a thicker wire like 8 gauge or reduce the wire length. It's also a good idea to keep your charge controller as close to the battery as possible. This helps reduce energy loss and also saves cost since you'll need shorter, thinner cables for the low voltage side. Now let's move on to a slightly more advanced example, a hybrid solar system setup. Here we'll configure two panels in series and then two of those series strings in parallel. This type of setup is called a 2S2P system. In such cases, a combiner box is required and it should always be placed as close to the solar panels as possible. We'll go step by step to calculate voltage, current, and finally, the right wire size for this setup. Step one. Calculate the voltage and current for the series connection. When panels are connected in series, their voltages add up, while the current remains the same. So, if you have two panels and each one has a VAP of 20.4 volts, then together they will produce 40.8 volts in total. The current will stay the same as one panel, but we'll again apply the 1.56 safety factor. So for panels with a short circuit current of 5.21 amps, the adjusted safe current becomes 5.21 amps multiply by 1.56 equals 8.12 amps. Step 2. Wire sizing between the solar panels and the combiner box. In a small setup like this, you can often use the same leads that come attached with the solar panels to connect them to the combiner box. But if your array is larger or the distance is long, you'll need to run solar extension cables from the panels to the combiner box. In that case, 
Use a voltage drop calculator again to check if your wire size is suitable for that distance. Step 3. Combining two series strings in parallel. When we combine two series strings in parallel, the current doubles, while the voltage stays the same as one series string. So in this case, with two series strings each carrying 8.12 amps, the total current at the combiner box will be 8.12 amps multiply by 2 equals 16.25 amps. Now let's say the combiner box is about 50 feet away from the charge controller. For this 50-foot run and current of around 16.25 amps, an 8-gauge, 10 millimeters squared wire is recommended. You can confirm this using a voltage drop calculator. It will show that 8-gauge wire keeps the voltage drop under control for that distance and current. However, an 8-gauge wire is quite expensive, around $90 for the required length in this example. To cut down the wiring cost, there's a smart adjustment you can make. Instead of a 2S2P setup, you can configure your system as 3S2P. That means adding one more panel in series per string. By doing this, the voltage of each series string increases to 61.2 volts, while the current remains the same. With higher voltage and the same power level, the current through the wire becomes lower, which allows you to use a smaller and cheaper 10-gauge wire. In this example, that 10-gauge wire costs around $76, which saves money without hurting performance. This demonstrates how connecting more panels in series can actually be more cost-effective because it helps reduce both voltage drop and cable cost. Just remember one important thing. Always make sure that your total series voltage does not exceed the maximum input voltage rating of your charge controller. If you found this explanation helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more practical solar setup tips right here on Battery Hacker.